In this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can utilize Next Auth to implement Google OAuth in your project. So to get started, let's go to the Google Developer Console, create a new project, then configure your OAuth consent screen. Then add test users. Then go back to the dashboard and go to your credentials and create a new OAuth client ID. We have a web app. And for the authorized redirect URI, we can go to the documentation here and we will get this URL for development. Now add that here and create. Now go into your Next.js code and if you haven't done so already, create a .env file and add in these two variables. And now we can just copy the client ID over and the client secret. Now go into your next auth file and let's import the Google provider from next auth. Now in our providers array underneath credentials provider, we can implement that Google provider. And then if we start up our development server and go to the endpoint of API auth sign in, we will get taken to this default screen where you can sign in with Google and you'll be prompted here to log in. So let me log in real quick. Here you can see that I now have this JWT and I am authenticated. However, I did not store anything in my database. So if I make any changes on this front end, and I want to associate that with the back end, well, I can't do that currently. So that's what we're now going to implement. And also I have my own custom uh, login form. So I want to point to that instead of having that API auth sign-in form. So the way that we can point to this instead is that we will just say pages here. And then we'll create a key value pair for sign in, which will point to this page and then sign out will just point to home. So now if we go to that prior endpoint, we'll just get taken back to this login screen. Now I'm going to refactor this auth form so that it includes the Google button for signing in. If you're not following along with the series, you can just skip ahead at this point. But if you are following along, we need to get this class name from our form and put it on our div up here. And then we're gonna give this a new height, which will be 36 REM. And down below, we can get rid of this height. Now let's add icons to our project. So go into your terminal and type in npmi react-icons. And then we will import a Google icon. And now let's go to the bottom of the form here. First, let's get rid of this width of 52 and make this width full. Now outside this format component, we will just have this option for or. And beneath that, we'll create a button for signing into Google. Make sure to pass in this callback URL. And now we can click on this and it will redirect us to our home page and we're quote unquote signed in. So at this point, we should now go to our back end and create a new route for OAuth login. So navigate to your back end code and in your .env file, you need to add the Google client ID and Google client secret. And now we'll install a package called Google Auth library and this will validate ID tokens. So now let's go into our constants file and create what the request body should look like for this new OAuth endpoint. And what we're gonna expect is just that the user passes in a provider 
and they also provide a token. And both of those need to be required. Now we need to go and modify our user model. And in here we need to modify the user type such that the password can be a string or undefined. And we'll create a new field called social login provider. And that can also be a string or undefined. And down here we need to reflect those changes in the mongoose model. So with that set up, let's go to our auth routes. Now here in my login route, I need to make this modification saying that if there is no existing user or there is no existing user password, we'll just return that it's an invalid email or password. Now under the login route, I'm going to create a OAuth login route and then I will wrap everything in a try catch block and validate the request body. Then if the provider is equal to Google, I will get the payload from the token which was provided in the request body. And if there is no payload, then I'll just send back an error message. Then I need to get the email and make sure that the email was verified from the payload. And if neither of those check out, then I will send back some errors to the user. And now if we get to this point, we need to fetch the user from our database via their email. And if there is an existing user and they don't have the same social provider or the social login provider is not equal to Google, then we need to say that the email is already registered. Otherwise, at this point, we either need to register the user or log them in. So that is what we're doing here. If the user doesn't exist, then we'll just create that account within the database. Then we'll generate an access token and refresh token and send that back to the user. And if we get all the way down to this point, we'll just send that we were not able to get their information. Now let's import this OAuth login schema and create this function to verify the Google ID token. Now up here in the top of the file, I'm going to create that verify Google ID token. And we're going to expect an argument of an ID token. We'll wrap everything in a try catch block and then we'll create a new OAuth2 client. We'll get the payload from the token and verify the token and then we will get the email and email verified and return that back and if we get an error we'll just return null and now we just need to import OAuth2 client from that Google Auth library so with this done let's start up this server and now we just need to make some final adjustments on the client side so go back to your client side code and head to the next auth file. And in this file, we need to create this function, which will call the endpoint that we just created and pass in a token and the provider. And then down here in the callbacks JWT function, we can access the account on the initial sign-in. So that is what we will do here. And above this condition, I am going to state that if the account is present and the account provider is Google, We'll call that OAuth login endpoint, passing in the ID token and the provider, and then we will return the data if it exists. And then here, I'm just gonna cast this as any. Now I'm gonna go into my database and show you guys that the user does not currently exist, which I'm about to register. So let's go back to the web browser, and I'm not authenticated, not signed in. So I'm going to say sign in. It doesn't matter, sign in or sign up. We just need to say continue with Google. And because I've already entered in my password, uh, I get taken back to this screen. And if I go back into my database, I should see a new user and there is the social login provider of Google. Now, if I sign out here, I can sign back in without any issues. and I get a new access token and refresh tokens, and I can call my protected routes. So that is how you guys can implement Google OAuth with NextAuth. I hope that you guys found this video useful, and thank you for watching.